A6. Okay, so this is the one to sketch orbitals, right? So, so um, you know, again, so, th so this is the way to, to, this is very similar to the other one. And what was it? I think A5. Um, but now it's like the reverse direction. So instead of me giving you the picture of them, right, you just simply draw them. And so, you know, the, the, the things to, to think about when drawing orbitals where you're given the type of orbital that you have is to think about, you know, A, um, how many angular nodes are you expecting? B, how many radial nodes are you expecting? And then C, what is the direction that all of the different lobes have to be, um, you know, in, in your specific case? Um, so in the case, right, of 3S, Right, so if we draw the x, y, z coordinate plane, right, x, y, z, <laughs> right? So we know that an s orbital is just simply a sphere, right? So it's just simply a sphere right here, right? So the 1s is just simply a sphere, but we're the 3s. And so if we're at the 3s, right, we know that for the s orbital that l is equal to one, uh, 0, sorry. L is equal to zero, right? It's the three S we know N is equal to three. <coughs> and we also know, right, that M sub L is gonna be equal to zero in this case, right? Just because three S just has to do with the relationship between L and M sub L, right? And the, and the relation, you know, the thing to think about, right, is that N is like any positive integer or the positive values, right? L can only be from zero to N minus one. And then M sub L can only be from L, uh, sorry, from negative L to zero to positive L, right? Those are the combinations that you can have. Now, um, the the thing to, to, to think about here, right? So now we have uh, the S orbital, right? But we're at N equals three. And so what we have to think about, you know, do is, you know, think about that, you know, the total number of nodes that you're going to have in your orbital is going to be equal to n minus one, right? Which is the same as l, right? L or not l, sorry, um, right? Is going to be equal to n minus one. The number of angular nodes, right, is equal to l, right? L is going to tell you how many angular nodes to expect within your orbital, and then the total number of radial nodes, right, is just simply going to be total number of nodes minus number of angular nodes, um, right? And so total number of nodes, right, is equal to number of angular nodes plus number of radial nodes. Now, in this case right here, right, for the 3s, we know that we have zero angular nodes, right, because L is equal to zero. We know that, you know, N is equal to three. So that means that the total number of nodes has to equal two, right, because three minus one is equal to two. So we have two radial nodes in this case, right, zero angular. So all we have to do, right, is that we just draw them in. So we have one phase, right, which is, you know, if we're just using like a pen or a pencil and we're not using like colored, Things on a test um, and and things right. So you can just simply be like, okay, right. So this you know uncolored phase right is one phase, and then I'm just gonna draw a sphere around it, right. And then that's just simply going to be you know colored in right here, right. That's the second phase, and then I'm gonna have another sphere right here, right. And that's the third one, right. So this is you know our first radial node, and then that's our second radial node right there, right. So those are our two radial nodes. Um, in this instance, right? And that's what the 3s looks like. Um, and those are the quantum numbers. If we go to the 3p, right? There's gonna be three of them, right? Cause there's three p orbitals. And so we can just do our first one, right? So we draw out our x, y, z coordinate axis to make our lives easier, right? So we have this right here. So looking at it, right? We know that our n value is equal to three, right? We're, we're using a p orbital. So our l value is going to be equal to one in this case. And then, you know, depending on the directionality of the orbital that we're drawing is then going to dictate um, what the, um, you know, what the M sub L value uh, can be in these instances. So the first one, right, that I'm gonna draw is, is the easiest one to draw is simply the Z direction. So all that is, right, for a P orbital, right, you just draw the P orbital first, no matter what N level you're at, right? You draw your P orbital in this case along the Z direction, right? So it looks like this guy right here. So it's just like, you know, People always refer to it as a dumbbell, um, right? It just like looks like, you know, a, I guess like a dumbbell or whatever, it's, right? It's just like two lobes on top, right? So, so we know that we're gonna have one angular node, right? And that, that comes from the P orbital. But we also know, right, because we have N equals three, that we should expect one radial node in this case. And so if we're expecting a radial node to draw a radial node. All you have to do is put a hat of the opposite color phase on top of the different lobes 
Um, right, so all we do is we just simply put a little hat on this lobe right here, right? And because this is, you know, co the colorless lobe, right, this becomes in the colored one on top. And then right here, right, we put a little hat on this little lobe guy right here, right? We put that on top of there, but now that one stays colorless, right? Because the lobe that's underneath it is is colored in, right? And then that right there is just simply a very poorly drawn depiction of the 3P, <laughs> of the 3P orbital, um, right? But it shows our our um, our angular node in this case, right? Because we're we have that node at the origin, right? That's that plane that includes the XY um, coordinate system, um, and then we have our radial node, right? Which is simply the hat, because now we just simply have you know that sphere of invisible energy um, around uh, the 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 you know the the lobes, um, right? And then that results in you know the different you know lobes that are on top of them um, that have the opposite phasing. So um, right, so this right here is then the the three P z right and because it's the the uh the z one right we know that m sub l is equal to zero right because it only has the z direction in it the next one we can draw right there's the two other ones that we know of is the x y and the x z right so if we draw the x y right so if this is x y z right the x y is then going to be along the y axis right for the lobe in this case right so this is the the p y and then we also have the XZ, and X, Y, Z, right? And then you can draw that guy along there, right? So this is the PX. And so again, right, we're still looking at 3P. So we know that N is equal to 3, L is still equal to 1. And then now M sub L, right, is just simply plus or minus 1 for both of these. Because as I'd mentioned in the A5 video, right, it just simply depends upon um you know your your where you're setting your reference point in terms of which one becomes the positive and which one becomes the negative one in these cases All right so these are the three px and the three py now the last thing to do right is you just have to make sure to draw the hats on top of these guys right because you still have that one radial node in each of these cases right because it's the three p right it has a, a one radial node and one angular node in this case so you just draw the hat right here right and that just simply becomes colored in because the opposite phase of the lobe that, it, that the hat's sitting on, right? And then you have this guy. And the, I, one thing I'm gonna say is like, don't on your answer key when you're explaining the thing, don't refer to them as hats. Uh, I'm just doing that as like a, an easy way to like be like, right, when you're drawing it, this is how to think about what it looks like, but what it is, right, is just simply, you know, uh, uh, the additional like lobe and, and the rest of the probability um, in those cases. So um, you have that, right? And then you have draw one here, right? And we draw one here and we just have, you know, to keep these guys warm. There's a question. Why does sphere of energy surround P orbital and not go inside? Well, so it's not a sphere of energy, right? What it what it is 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 just simply uh, a node, right? So it's just simply a point where you have zero probability of finding the electron, and so you have one, right, that goes inside, and that's the angular node. Um, but then you have, right, basically a thing. And so if you go back and you look at what the wave function for uh, each one of these guys looks like. You know, you have um, you start getting into it, right? Uh, um, the the quadratic portion, right? So I think it's like was like six sigma minus or plus x squared or something like that. I think maybe minus x squared, um, right? And so that's where the the dip comes from, um, and where you get the change of phasing at a certain distance from the nucleus, um, and that's where you know the radial node is located. Um, in those cases, right? Because you get that you get that you get that dip. Um, and because it's not at the origin, right, because it's further out, it, you know, and, and, and the way that the, the wave function works, right, is that essentially, you know, there's the, the, the cosine and the sine components to it as you change, you know, theta and phi as you're like, you know, rotating around, you know, 360 degrees around it and like, you know, in all the different directions, um, you know, the, the contributions like the, you know, the start coming into play, but you still always have that same distance from the nucleus, you're always going to have, you know, a, a, a node there, right? It doesn't matter, um, you know, at what theta and phi you, you are when R is equal to whatever that value is based off of um, the, the wave function, the atom that you're looking at, right? is always going to then dictate where um, the, where the, the radial node is located. And it's going to be the same in, in each one of those cases. <laughs> um, but yeah. So we have this right here, uh, 3D, right? So we can just work our way through here as well. So there's, you know, five 3D orbitals. Um, right, so Z, Y, X, right? So the first one is one that you're probably gonna have to memorize, uh, right? It's gonna be the 3D Z squared, um, right? 
so 3dz squared that's just simply the one where you have you know the 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 dumbbell like the p orbital like thing but then you're gonna have like the donut that's in the different phase around it in this case <clears throat> right and so this has you know n equals three this is l equals two right because the d orbital and then it's m sub l is equal to zero because it's you know strictly in the d uh, uh the z direction the next ones right that we can look at are um the 3d uh, xc and the 3d yz right so the xc is has the lobes sitting right so this is all, so the, re the remaining ones are all like the four leaf clovers um right these are all have the lobes sitting um either in between uh the coordinate like between the axes or directly on the axis and so in the case of the 3d xc right because you're multiplying the x and the z part of it those are going to be sitting in between the axes and so you're going to have you know one lobe that's going to be sitting right here and then you're going to have another one that's going to be you know down here and then you have one here and you have one here right and then you just color them in where you're changing the phases as you go across the the, the different axes right the different planes right and so this is going to be the 3d x z in this case right? and then you have then the matching one where now you do it also in the y direction x y z right so this becomes the 3d y z right and so then for both of these you know n is equal to 3 l is equal to 2 right and so the l value is giving us that we have two angular nodes which is the you know along the the um the axes right and then for both of them right m sub l you know is going to be plus or minus one right and then you just have to make sure you're staying consistent if you're going to definitively assign them right with which side is which the next ones to look at, right, are going to be then the, the 3dx squared minus y squared and the 3dxy, right? So those are going to be the ones that have zero z component as a part of the, um, um, you know, uh, description. Um, and those are then going to be the maximum value of m sub l that you have, right? So in this case, they're going to be m sub l plus or minus two, um, right? But so you have the z direction, x, y, in this case, right? So you're going to have one right, where you have the 3d x, y. So again, this is going to be multiplying the x and the y axes with each other. And so the lobes are going to be sitting in between the axes. And then here, right, the other one that we have is the one that where it sits directly on it, right? So this is the 3d x squared minus y squared. Right? And so then again, n is equal to 3, l is equal to 2, and then m sub l is equal to plus or minus 2 in this case, right? And that's how you draw those um, in those cases. So again, you know, going through making sure um, you, you figure out how many angular nodes, how many radial nodes you have, and then thinking about, okay, well, what are the different directions um, that I know of that, that they should be, ha you know, that they should go? Um, and then you can figure out stuff from there.